Okay, I'm just going to go through a question on analytical velocity with um, this PowerPoint file. So, there are four types of questions that are asked in this. Um, problems involving two particles, roads, junctions, river currents and winds, and apparent velocity of the wind. Um, the problem we're going to be dealing with is problems involving two particles. Just here is a simple example. If you've got two cars that are moving, the relative motion of one with respect to two um, is going to be less than, than those. If you imagine in this case, you've got one car going at 5 meters per second, one going at 10 meters per second. The relative motion of one with respect to two would still be, um, the answer for that would be, still be, um, would be 5 meters per second. Now, how do we get that? If you were in car two, this is what car would look like. It would look as though it just moved away at 5 meters per second. Now, the formula is that the relative velocity of 1 with respect to 2 is given by v1 minus v2. So, if you've got cars that tra are travelling in opposing directions, it makes sense. If you're driving past a car in a motorway, it seems faster. So, now these are kind of more complicated problems when you've got cars going at angles. And indeed, we've got an example of a question here, which is um, a relative velocity question with two ships. P and Q, one is moving north, 20 miles per kilometers per hour, one is traveling southwest at 10 root 2 kilometers per hour. Now the question um, asks us to find the velocity of P in terms of I and J, and the velocity of Q in terms of I and J. So this is roughly what's going on. P is moving up that way, and Q is going then that way. Now, Vectors, we can look at that one there, it's 20 kilometers per hour north. This one here, 10 root 2, at an angle of 45 degrees. So, to convert this into i's and j's, it's quite easy. You have to remember that i's go along the x-axis and j's go along the y-axis. So that will be equal to plus 20j. There's no i component because it doesn't go along the east-west line at all. Now, part two is to convert this into i's and j's. So, in order to do that, that, that vector can be broken into two components. One along the x-axis and one down the y-axis. We know that we can work that out then. We've got the hypotenuse is 10 root 2. We've got the angle here, which is 45. And then this here is the hypotenuse times the cos of the angle, and this here is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in this case, we get this here, and when we multiply that or put them into the calculator, we'll find that we get the value of minus 10i minus 10j. And um, right. So, part three is uh, the velocity of p relative to q, and this is easy, seeing as we've got them in i and j's. The formula is v a b is equal to v a minus v b. So, in this case, v q p is equal to the velocity of p minus the velocity of q, which breaks out like this, just be careful of the signs, so make sure to include that bracket around the outside, and if you just change in the signs, and that's what you get, plus 10i plus 30j, the vector would look like that. So, if you were on both q, both p would look like it was travelling like that, makes sense. So, we have to find the shortest distance between the both P and Q. Now, we've got this line of path here. So, we know they initially start off 50 kilometers. Um, initially, it's, it's exactly 50 kilometers due west of both Q. So, where's the shortest distance? And when the relative motion of P is perpendicular to Q. So, that line there. So, we've got this kind of triangle. We're looking for that distance. We know it's a right angle there. We know that's 50 kilometers. So, we need to find out the angle here. Now we know that that vector, or that line there, is along the angle of the relative velocity vector, which is 10i plus 30j. So if we construct a triangle with 10 of the adjacent and, and 30 being the opposite, we get tan of that, uh, that is equal to 3, 
and then the, the angle will be the tan inverse of that which is 71.56 degrees so we know that we know that we know this and now we have a right angle triangle we're looking for the opposite side we know the hypotenuse and we know the angle so we use sine so sine of 71.56 is equal to d over 50 or d is equal to 50 times the sine of 71.56 so D is 47.43 kilometers. Now, try this question here. And if you can do that, you're well able to do this.